the fear of the lion and the elephant once upon a time a discussion was going on between a lion the king of the forest and his friend elephant who was inhabitant of the same forest they were talking about a great deed then suddenly the lion disclosed his fear of coming of cock the elephant started laughing at him just then a small mosquito started circling around the elephant's ear making him restless and worried the elephant was really scared of its humming sound that made him puzzled now it was the turn of the lion to laugh at the elephant's accent moral of the story sometimes our fear is baseless we name a crow a deer and a jackal A deer and a crow were friends. A jackal, waiting to eat the deer, pretended to become friends with them. One day, the jack jackal took the deer to a field that was green and luscious. The deer started grazing there every day. In a sunny day, while the deer was grazing, he got caught on a trap set by the farmer. He called out jackal for help. The jackal pretended not to hear. He was happy as he would now get eat the deer. Seeing this. The crow advised the deer pretend that to be dead. The farmer came and saw the deer was dead. Farmer released the trap, and the deer sprang up and ran. The farmer threw a stick, which struck. Jackal and he fell down. Moral of the story: Do not trust strangers. Future king. Once upon a time, a squirrel lived on a huge tree in the forest.
One afternoon, a fox was walking through the forest and spotted a bunch of grapes hanging from a lofty branch. Just the thing to quench my thirst, said the fox. Taking a few steps back, the fox jumped and just missed the hanging grapes. Again, the fox took a few paces back and tried to reach them, but still failed. Finally, giving up, the fox turned up with his nose and said, They, they, they are probably so anyway. Then he walked away. Moral of the story. It's easy to despise what you cannot have. The Arab and his camel An Arab had a camel. One cold night, the Arab lay asleep inside the tent while the camel stood outside. At midnight, the camel awoke his master and requested him to allow him to put his head inside the tent. As it was bitter cold, cold outside, the Arab allowed him to, to do so after a while. The camel asked, asked the Arab if he might put his neck inside the tent. The Arab did not object to do. Soon after, the camel requested him, him uh, again to allow him to bring his legs inside. The Arab agreed. Now the camel complete, stood completely inside the tent. Uh, but as there was not a space enough for both of them, he pushed the Arab outside to shiver when cold. Moral of the story. Let the evil in the bud. Meaning is Kill the evil at the start. The crab and the stork. Once in the forest there was a pond. Many fishes Crabs and other small animals lived in that pond. There was an old stork. He was old and weak enough that he can't catch fish. Most of his days end in hunger. Just like...
The stork replied, I decided to live rest of my life drinking fruits and vegetables. That's why I am not catching the fish. When, uh, whenever they are near to me, so, the, uh, so yesterday I met my astrologer friend. He told me that there will be no, no rain for five years. This pond will rain due to the drought. Unknown this, the, about the fact that the in, innocent uh, creatures of this pond will die. The big animals like tortoise and crocodile can escape by walking. But what about the fish? Hearing this, all fishes in the pond became feared and all came on the top of the pond and as the saw, stop. Please advise us, what should we do now? This, this stork acted as she deep thinking and said, When I was flying, I saw a pond full of lotuses, not so far, far from here. I think and in that pond there is enough water and the drought will not affect that pond. If you want, I can shift uh, you there. All the fishes became happy on hearing the suggestion. The store continued, I am very old. I can fly continuously. Every day I will shift only five fishes before summer. All of you will be in the new pond. The poor fishes believed him. From that day onwards, the stork carried five fishes and flew away. The cruel stork took them to a rock and ate. On returning to the pond, he made stories about the new pond. Days went on. One day, the crab asked to the stork, Dear friend, I am very sad. Both the first started talking about the rope. And you didn't save me yet. You are taking only fishes. When uh, will you carry me to the new pond? I am very much eager to reach there. The stork thought, I am bored of eating fishes every day. If I take him, I can eat his yummy meat. Stork said, Okay, my dear friend. You can climb on me. I will take you to the new world. The crab became very happy and climbed on the stork while flying. The crab looked around. He didn't see any pond nearby. But he saw a small Hill of bones of fishes. The clever crab felt the danger, but he didn't show death. The crab said, Do you find where is the pond? Is it too far from here? If you are tired, we can take rest. The stork laughed. Ha, 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 ha. Uh, the hey foolish crab, there is no pond. I made that plan to eat fishes every day. And all of you fat into it. Today I will gonna eat you. Ha ha ha. So 
grew for many days. One night, the donkey said to the jackal, "Friend, I feel like singing on night, like tonight, when the moon is full and beautiful. What song? What song shall I sing?" The jackal called, "Send, friend, we are here to steal." A thief said. Keep quiet as possible. I may add your voice is not as pleasant as you you think. Uh, and sounds like cot being blown. Blown. Your voice can be heard over a long distance. It will awaken the farmers who are sleeping, and you will have a scot. The jackal assured. Please eat as much as you like, and forget about singing. Annoyed the donkey, and he said, "Dear friend, it is because you, because you are a wild animal, that that you don't appreciate music. I shall sing a melody and song. Wait." Determined to sing, the the jackal did not wish staying here anymore. He said, "Friend, if you must sing, please wait until I go outside the fence and keep a watch on the farmhouse." He ran outside the fence and hid himself. Then the donkey started to bray at the top of his voice. When the farmers hear the donkey braying, the the co the could see. Easily in the full moon, it found us that the donkey was in the farm. The angry farmers chased the donkey with sticks and beat him so hard that he fell on the. Ground. Then they tied a wooden mortal around around his neck and let him go. When the donkey was returning, that that through through. The broken friend, the jackal laughed. Musical friend, that was a great song. I see you farmers having rewarded you with this necklace. Moral of the story: There was always a proper place and time to do. Once in a palace, there was a head louse who lived under the soft bed seat, a maid of fur. She lived by drinking blood of the king. Every night, the king came into that room for sleep.
sleeping and when he fall asleep the head louse climb on the king's head and drink his blood because of his deep sleep he never knew the pain of her wife one day a wandering bed bug reached there the louse asked who are you why are you here how you reach here the bed bug replied i am a bed bug i have no permanent house i am just a, a wandering bug the louse told to the bed bug you go away from here before anyone see you this is not a safe place for you the bed bug surprisingly asked why are you behaving like this i am your guest guests should be treated as god you supposed to ask me about my health and offer some drinks and food your behavior is quite weird i am not uh, uh, expecting such a disrespect respectful behavior uh, from a well uh, cultured person like you the louse replied that is right but at this situation i don't want to trouble my life i am living here without much problem the bed bug said you are selfish i drank many people's blood you know the taste of blood is different by person and their food some are sour some are hot some are sweet you are so lucky that you can drink a king's blood i also want to taste the king's blood who ate different fruits and sweets i am sure that king's blood should be sweet so my dear friend please allow me to drink his blood at least once hearing this love told okay i will allow you to be here for this night only I used to run uh, when king fall in deep sleep you should follow me according to my knowledge you are so impatient so i don't want so uh, don't so hurry we can drink as much blood as we want Once king fell asleep the bell the bug agreed While they were talking king entered into the room and lay down on the bed The bed bug and the head louse was waiting for his sleep but the impatient bed bug was greedy for the blood and bite the king The king jumped from his bed in pain and ordered his men to search for bugs and clean the bed. Suddenly the bed bug hid under the coat. The king's men searched and found their head louse who was going slowly in search of hiding place. Unfortunately, they killed her they had lost died because she gave shelter to a stranger without proper knowledge of his character moral of the story never give shelter to strangers